to face the rear of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and the peace of our loving God, who raised Jesus from the dead, be with you all. And with your spirit. We always begin the funeral liturgy at the baptism font so that we can recall what it means for someone to be baptized. It was in the waters of baptism that Paul died and rose with Christ to a new life. May he now share with the Lord a glory that lasts forever. On the day of his baptism, Paul received a beautiful white garment and put on Christ. On the day of Christ's coming, may he be clothed with the Lord's glory. In life, Paul cherished the cross. As we place the cross on his casket, we pray that the Lord will welcome him with the words he spoke from the cross when he said, Today, you will be with me in paradise. Paul has completed his baptism. We therefore continue his funeral liturgy in song.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you are water for our thirst and manna in our desert. We praise you for Paul's life and bless your mercy that has brought his suffering to an end. Now we ask that same endless mercy to raise him to a new life. Nourished by the food and drink of heaven, may he rest forever in the joy of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. And I understand that Laura is going to say a few words. Hello, um, my name is Laura Butman Nymphs, and I have been a friend and a family neighbor with the Rouse for over 45 years. And Melissa and Jennifer have put together some reflections about their dad, and I'm blessed to be able to read them to you now in the voices of Melissa and Jenny. Good morning, or top of the morning to you, which our dad would say. On behalf of our family, Melissa and Jenny would like to thank everyone for attending today. We really appreciate your presence at the homecoming celebration for our dad. He would be really grateful that you're all here to share in this celebration of his life. Our dad was an energetic person who enjoyed life and had a fantastic sense of humor. As a father figure, our dad taught us about living life to the fullest by example. One of Melissa's fondest memories of Paul involves attending two college football games within 24 hours. Keep in mind that a hotel stay for rest was not part of the itinerary. After attending the Michigan State University game at the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida, Paul the family and friends, drove to Miami for the University of Michigan Orange Bowl game. Without skipping a beat, they then drove back to Orlando and flew home. Jenny fondly remembers attending the Indy 500 and other auto races with her father. Paul was truly in his element at an oval track, in the pits, and when he had the opportunity to meet and take pictures and get autographs with his favorite race car drivers. Racing was a love that Paul shared with his family and friends. Our dad liked to take pictures and to capture memories. When he'd see people on vacation taking photos, he'd almost always offer to take a picture so that everyone in their family could be involved. He always took more than one and he included a horizontal and a vertical picture and he paid attention to the framing and the background. Our dad encouraged us to take care of ourselves, to exercise, and to eat healthy. Paul participated in the Senior Olympics when he was in his 50s. He enjoyed the running events, especially the 800-meter run, for which he received a bronze medal. Paul taught us to be proud of our heritage and to appreciate where you came from. He loved Frankenmuth and he loved Germany. Our dad had Alzheimer's for the last 10 years of his life. They say that living and taking care of someone with Alzheimer's is the long goodbye. We lovingly walked him home, and now he's eternally resting in heaven. Melissa, his eldest daughter, and his wife, Marcia, were his primary caregivers during this time. It said, to care for those who once cared for us is one of the highest honors. Both Melissa and Marcia lived this. Some other things about our dad. He loved his family and he was very proud of all three of his girls, our mom, Missy, and Jennifer. He would always encourage us and support us in whatever we were doing. He didn't believe in giving up, and he perceived failure was more about approaching something from a different angle. He loved to sing, 
and to listen to music ranging from classical to rock and roll. He was very organized, and he always helped his girls to be prepared. For example, we would always have a paper map, a sleeping bag, warm clothes, a window scraper in the car for the winter months, car fluids, just in case any of those items were needed. He always provided extension sets and power strips anytime his daughters moved. Jenny lovingly kept a box of those for a very long time. He held close to his heart both the Lutheran and Catholic faiths. He had a great sense of humor, and he would always make routine things entertaining. But best of all, our dad taught us to enjoy ourselves in whatever we were doing, to have fun, and to laugh a lot. One of Melissa's childhood friends made a comment regarding our dad. Green, blue, or black and white checkered, your dad was awesome. Praying that he's enjoying the fast lane now at 225 miles per hour. We agree, he was an awesome dad. In summary, Paul would want you to honor his memory by going to the sporting event, especially if it's the U of M versus MSU football game or the Indy 500. Take the vacation. Take the photos and the videos and capture those mem memories for yourself and others. Take care of yourself. Be prepared and organized. Enjoy your family and friends, but most of all, have fun and enjoy whatever you're doing. I'm going to now read a prayer which Paul wrote. Uh, we found this prayer when we were going through his things, and we aren't exactly sure when he wrote it but possibly when he became a Catholic, which was in 1987. The prayer is called PRR Prayer, Paul Raymond Rao. I thank you, God, for all my blessings. I thank you for my wife, daughters, family, and relatives, fellow employees, and friends. I thank you for my wife's health, daughter's health, family and relatives' health, fellow employees' health, friends' health, and my health. On behalf of my wife, daughters, and myself, I thank you for the following. I thank you for our food and clothing. I thank you for our home and possessions. I thank you for our education and intellect. I thank you for our employment and transportation. I thank you for allowing us to be citizens of the United States of America and for keeping our country free from war. I ask and pray that you may help us avoid the sins of greed, contempt, envy, jealousy, self-centeredness, and excessive materialism. I ask and pray that you may help us help those that are in need and less fortunate than we are. I ask and pray that you may put an end to war, poverty, despair, homelessness, loneliness, hunger, illiteracy, physical and mental illness, and an end to man's inhumanity toward his fellow man. All these things that I have thanked you for in this prayer, asked your help with, and prayed for in this prayer, I ask for these in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. from the book of Ecclesiastes. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything and a time for every affair under the heavens. A time to be born in a time to die, a time to plant, in a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill, in a time to heal, a time to tear down, in a time to build, 
a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything appropriate for its time and has put things that are timeless into our hearts without us ever discovering from beginning to end the work which God has done. The word of the Lord.
Paul to the Thessalonians. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, if you have faith and do not waver, not only will you do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, it will be done. Whatever you ask for in prayer with faith, you will receive. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to need a copy of that prayer. One of the things that struck me about it I mean, you think about Paul's life and about uh, his diagnosis and about these last several years. And you hear a prayer written by Paul himself and he goes on and on about how much he's thankful for. I was trying to think if if I had gotten some kind of diagnosis where a disease progressed in badness and I was going to write a prayer, I just, as I was sitting there, I was wondering whether my prayer would, would be like that, would be a list of things I was thankful for. I know that uh, it, it wasn't all that long ago uh, that 
Paul struggled to, to verbalize actual words. And, and, and yet he, he loved to sing. And so when he was, would sing uh, like church songs, I mean, he would, it would be a mix, a mix of actual words that were part of the song, but then just of other words that he made up himself. He'd, fi and he'd just sort of fill in the blanks with words that were not uh, intelligible to anyone who heard him, but he sang those non-words perfectly and filled in the song. Now, at this point, you might think, well, isn't that kind of too bad that he couldn't really pray those songs that well? Well, now, just hold on a second. I looked this up. When we do not know how to pray properly, then the Holy Spirit personally prays for us in groans that cannot be put into words. And the one who can see into all human hearts knows what the Spirit means. In other words, when Paul was unable to pray the, the actual words of the song, the Holy Spirit prayed for him and prayed in him. And now he's got a front row seat in the angelic choir Which means that now and when he was sick and before he got sick, all of those times he was singing a joyful song to the Lord. All heaven is in sight. We trust you to the care and goodness of Almighty God. Sing to the Lord a new song. I invite you all to stand in faith. Let us now offer our intercessions to God, and Jenny is going to lead us in those. We pray for Paul Rao, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life and who nourished at the table of the Lord. May he now be admitted to the company of the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all those who are struggling with serious health problems, especially those who are near death, may we pray to the Lord. Lord for those who care for the sick, doctors, nurses, caregivers, and families, may they reveal Christ's infinite, infinite patience and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the family and friends of Paul, may they receive comfort and healing through Christ's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all who have died, especially Paul, 
May the crosses they have carried in this life become crowns of glory in eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here today, may we remain faithful to God, the giver of all life. May we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the prayers of those who cry out to you benefit your servant Paul, O God. Free him from any sin and grant him a full share in your redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord your hands praise and glory in his name for our good of all As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O God, we ask your mercy that Paul, who never doubted your son to be a loving Savior, may now find in him a merciful Redeemer who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal God, through Christ the Lord. For in him the hope of resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by death might be consoled by the promise of immortality. Indeed, for your faithful people, Lord, life is changed, not ended. 
And even when our earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, and without end we acclaim. those who are able to kneel. The rest of you may be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Lord, remember Paul, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him, in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit 
to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and you all to stand remembering that our true and eternal home is indeed in heaven let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us, let us share a sign of peace together. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please be seated.
Lord God, whose son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Paul may now come to the banquet table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Just a couple things before we conclude the liturgy. First of all, what's going to happen at the very end is we're going to take uh, Paul's mortal body out and it will be placed in the hearse and we're going to follow the hearse real slow. We'll go right across the parking lot to the parish cemetery and that's where the final prayers are. It's a, a, the, the committal service where he'll have military honors and then the final prayers. Following that, there's luncheon. The family wants to invite everyone to luncheon at the Bavarian Inn. And there's going to be someone out there to direct when you arrive of where the luncheon is inside. Second, what we're going to have now is a very tender uh, moment a very beautiful ritual called the final commendation. Remember on the cross, Father, into your hands I commend. Well, to commend, you hand over to God totally. So we're going to do that now for Paul. And of course, we're going to uh, use uh, music. How could we not? And the refrain is in your uh, music, your worship aids. But I'm gonna, as we're singing, I'm going to walk around his casket uh, with some uh, rose-scented uh, incense. Psalm 141, Lord, may my prayers rise before you like incense. We do so knowing more firmly that we will be seeing Paul again when the love of Christ, which conquers all, finally brings an end even to death itself. So, for this final commending of Paul to God, I invite you all to stand.
into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Paul in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he too will rise on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you did give him in this life, for they are signs to us of your goodness. Merciful Lord, turn toward us now and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to Paul and help us who remain to comfort each other with our faith until we all meet one day in Christ and are with you and with Paul forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. In the peace of Christ, let us take our brother Paul to his place of rest. 